Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 61st episode of Proyard Podcast. Today, I'm joined with Anna Marie Kovaya. She's a senior game artist from Helsinki, Finland. And with that introduction out of the way, could you please give us a little introduction on how you got into visual arts and design? Uh, well, I actually started this career path about six years ago. And before that, I was a journalist for almost 10 years. I was doing a kind of layout journalism, which is in the visual field, but I didn't really know how to draw or paint. So one day I, or not really one day, but gradually I started to think that maybe I could start to reach out my childhood dream, which was being a game artist. And because the game industry is blooming here in Finland, I started to search for some tutorials or ways that I could develop the skills. Even though I was already 29 when I start when I decided to do that, but there are so many resources now that you don't have to get into a school. You can just basically learn on your own. So I started doing that and I joined communities like the Oatly Academy and found schoolism.com and began to learn by myself and started doing a little bit of freelance jobs there. So I started to gain a bit of experience. And then one day I got this email from a game, um, from these programmers who needed a game artist to their projects. And then I was able to quit my job as a journalist and make the shift to what I do now. Awesome. And um, were you originally, of course, you already explained to us a bit of that, but were you originally studying art and design or we were pursuing another career path? And I know you already explained, but what I mean by that, I mean, what's, how was your planning going on for future when we were in high school or when you wanted to go to college, maybe? Uh, well, I actually, I did think about going into graphic design when after high school, but uh, uh, I wasn't good enough at drawing and I didn't know that I could improve. I thought that it's, it's kind of a set, uh, we have a kind of a base skill set that we are given and it can't be improved. And I couldn't get into art schools with the skills that I had, that I had. but I got into journalism after reading a lot <laughs> for that. So I didn't really think about going into game art or doing like an artist work, except that I did some casual drawing in between. And I kind of, I had the interest for drawing, like even when I did some layout design at work, when I was in the journalism field, I kind of wanted to do some illustrations for some of the articles. They were really bad, but I kind of did those anyway, sometimes. So in a way, I al always kind of had a little bit of a calling towards that direction, but I didn't really pursue it or take it that seriously until six years ago. All right, that makes sense. And uh, well, I mean, in the, in, the, in the introduction, we already mentioned that you're a senior game artist, but um, we want to go a bit more specific and in depth. What is your main branch of design that you're focusing on? And tell us about your experience from the start of it until now? Uh, well, my um, main job is that I am making environments. I design them and I draw them and paint them and then I model them. And I guess I went into that because mm, I'm a person who generally likes to be in the nature. And if you want to improve, you have to be drawing what you see and observe. So it was kind of a natural thing that when I was out in the nature and I drew the trees and the rocks and I started to paint them, that it was the thing that I was improving most at, like compared to like things like character design. So that's something that has been kind of stuck with me and what I've been improving at. And that's like the main thing that I do now, even though I touch base on other things too, like making illustrations and icons and sometimes characters to the illustrations too. All right. And um, 
how does your design process usually go anytime you want to work, start working on a new project? Like um, for a personal project? Uh, like it could be um, like an assignment in your studio you have to do or a drawing you have to, you know, draw, you know, anything like a, like a work. Like you want to, do, mm. for example, draw an environment, for example, let's say. Well, it all, all starts with the reference hunting, because you have to feed your mind with ideas. Of course, it's great if you can create some ideas from your brain, but there's usually like a limit when you get start to get stuck, and then it's great to see ideas that what other people have done, and you can always, um, well, you can always like see things from a new and fresh perspective if you see what kind of solution some person has been using. But if you're if you're just designing a tree, for example, there are so many incredible trees out there that people have drawn that you couldn't possibly come up with yourself maybe at that moment. So always just it all starts with reference hunting. But of course you have to create something from uh, on your own and from your mind. So once you gather those ideas, you start to sketch yourself and turn your own ideas. And once you're done with that, you begin to flesh those once more, flesh out those once more, and and you develop the ones that are most promising to um, further. All right, awesome. And... Uh... This one is an interesting question that I don't ask like every single guest, but um, to I ask those who seem to be like they, I see some really unique creativity in their works, and the maybe the question is, have you ever used your dreams as inspiration for your works? Mm. I think I have. I'm not completely sure. Uh, I do sometimes meditate and I use those visions that I get from there as an inspiration, but not really dreams, unless like, of course, like visual people usually have very visual dreams. And actually, now it popped into my mind that I did have this dream once there, where there were, were these blue stones everywhere and I did try to paint that. But I kind of failed doing it, so I never published it anywhere. All right. And um, who are your favorite artists and designers that have inspired you the most? Uh, there are so many. But Nathan Fawkes, for sure, he's like my favorite environment artist. He's not just a great artist, but also a really great teacher. And Marco Bucci and Javier Burgos. He's actually a character artist, but he's really great at using using shapes and emotion in his characters, and they are they are just so good to look at. Um, and Ethan Zena, Chris Oatley, Noah Bradley too which I know you interviewed a little while ago. Um, uh, who? Sorry, could you please repeat that? Noah Bradley. Oh, Noah Bradley, oh yeah. And, and who else? Uh, it's really hard to come up with names, even though usually like I have a whole set in mind. And I usually look at those people's work before I do any illustrations because they help to set the bar high. Uh, Elena and Olivia Ceballos also, they are really great. They are these twin sisters from DreamWorks and they make, they create these really beautiful environmental illustrations with, with a really beautiful lighting. But basically artists who use this kind of stylized approach are usually my favorite ones and who are great at color and light. All right. And the 
artists you mentioned are like I actually used to study some of their works, which you know, especially like for example, you mentioned Noah Bombly, like his coloring is really good when it comes to environmental art, you know. And, yes, for sure. And oh, well, I mean, uh, speaking of like artworks in general, um. What is the main subject of your artworks and what made them interesting to you? Like by artworks, of course, I don't mean the works you're commissioned to draw mm. or you have to draw for a job. I mean the works you do it for your personal personal works. But what I mean by that. What are the main subjects of them usually? Mm. Well, they're not set in stone, but I just get inspired by color and light. That I see around, and then I try to interpret it in my work. If that makes sense. And um, what technologies and softwares do you most use for your works? And by technologies, I mean the hardware, of course. Uh, well, if I'm just uh, sketching outside, then I use just watercolors for environment art. But then, uh, when you're making concept art, you can basically just use any kind of medium as long as you can interpret the idea that you have. You can use just post it notes <laughs> and draw on those as long as you have the idea somewhere. But once you get uh, like into modeling, then I use Blender and Photoshop. Uh, Photoshop is my main painting program. And then sometimes I sketch on iPad with Procreate. If I want to digital, if I want to do digital art outdoors, the planner is right, really. And... Uh, oh, sorry, sorry, go on. Uh, I was just saying that like plain air habit is a really important habit to have if you're an environmental artist because that helps you get outdoors and observe nature around you and also know how you can take something just out from the nature and interpret the design in an appealing way. Mm -hmm. And I want to ask you about something. I want your opinion on a subject that's been going on for like a couple of months lately in the art community and is still going on a strong. Um, I want to know your opinion on NFTs or do you plan on minting and then dropping an NFT in the future? Mm. What was that term? Uh, NFTs. What's an NFT? Oh, that's basically the art community right now in a nutshell. Like some people don't even don't even know what's going on. There's some people who hate NFTs. There's some people who love NFTs. So, all right. In short, I'm gonna tell you now what an NFT is. NFT is basically it means a non fungible token. And to make it as short and basic as possible. Basically, it makes it possible for artists to sell their digital artworks in a unique way with the with the blockchain and crypto technology behind it. And recently, there has been some really famous like digital art historic NFTs purchases. That I think the most famous one that everyone knows is the Beeple. You know, Beeple, the three D artist, famous guy, three D artist, and he sold his NFT for sixty nine million dollars. Which nice. he basically was a compilation of the first his five thousand works because he's been doing a three D model every single day for like ten thirteen years now, and he sold the first five thousand days like as a compilation and sent, sold it for like sixty nine million dollars in an auction, and um, yeah, it's been popping off all over the art community and for anyone who's listening and also yourself, I highly suggest you to research that. It's a really interesting hot topic and oh. have even some opportunities for you to maybe, you know, make some profits of this new boom of technology. And mm, that um, sounds interesting. And yeah, the, there are some major controversies about it and there's like two very different sides about it. There are sides who are it's totally against it and anyone who even mentions NFTs because it's bad for the environment and all of that. But like there's a lot of arguments going on right now. Um uh, but that it would take up like two hours for me to talk, so we're just gonna skip over that and let's 
I, uh, by the way, do you personally have any questions I could answer right now? Uh, not really. All right, so let's move on. Um, any advice and tips for a good portfolio and resume for artists? Well, that really depends on what kind of job you're looking for as an artist. Like, if you're looking uh, to be hired by a certain company, then you then it's good to tailor your work to fit that company so they could imagine that they can hire you instantly and don't have to teach you how to do the job. So like, especially for police art, there are so many people who already love the style. So, and, th and there are so many people who are lined up to work in there and they already make their work look like it's production ready for them. So it's really important to kind of be in that game if you're looking for a work like that. But if you're, of course, like if you're looking for character design work, then you should have character design in your portfolio and avoid putting extra things in there that will confuse people about what you do. Like sometimes you can be proud about achievements that you've done somewhere else, but maybe you can make a different kind of website for them in that case. Because in that case, you're just focusing on the wrong things. And when people have open positions for jobs, they might have many uh, people applying for them and they might only have a little time to go through their portfolio. So it's important they see right away your best work and the right kind of work that you want to present. So just put your best feet, best foot out and put the right kind of work. Know who are you going to work for if you have a company in mind. Right, and um, what are you working on right now that you can tell us about? What kind of project is it? I mean, of course, if it's something that an NDA is involved, we can skip right past this question right now. But if that's not yeah. the case, could you please tell us what you're doing right now? Yeah, sorry, I can't really tell, uh, talk about my work that much. Uh, no worries. <laughs> um, but uh, like, what kind of like is it a concept art? Is it senior art? Like, like, could you share that much? Like what I do, you mean? For it? No, I mean, what kind of medium is it? Like, is it concept art? Is it environment art? Is it uh, character design? Yeah, it's mostly environment art right now. But being like a senior artist, I'll, um, I have a lot of balls that I'm chuckling with. Mm. All right. And uh, what area beside the area you're working on right now, which is art, would you be interested to explore and learn in the future, given if you had like enough time, like extra time and resources for you to go learn something else or do something else? And it could be unrelated to art as well. Ah, oh, interesting question. Uh, well, if it was possible, I think I would just travel so I could feed my mind a little bit with something else than art and just see what's out there and what people are doing. All right. I mean, that's, I think this COVID has made a lot of us just longing to get outside, even if it's just a street over there. Like for here in Turkey, it's been like, three week lockdown like total lockdown and yeah i mean after a while you oh. feel the pressure that i need to go out i need to just go out even if it means just a balcony which i don't have a balcony but you get the point <laughs> yeah and, for sure uh, all right sorry to hear about that about your country oh, no being worries. in lockdown by the way no no worries i mean it's needed um how's finland doing with the covid situation well it's true doing like pretty well right now really? yeah the numbers are going down right now and uh, uh, public places are starting to open so it's going quite well especially compared to other countries oh. yeah uh, how about yeah compared to the neighboring country sweden which from the start of corona they didn't like mostly if i'm right <laughs> uh, went through with all the like social you know 
so social distancing for masks all that stuff they didn't care at all like how did that work out yeah. in the end uh yeah i'm not sure how they are doing in there yeah yeah it's best just yeah just wear your mask it's not that much just stay safe guys <laughs> yeah and um, but... all right yeah, I hope they're good. Actually, once I stopped in the journalism field, I kind of have been giving myself the freedom not to read news as much because <laughs> I've been focusing just art. Like when I when I was in journalism, I was always just reading news. Mm. Yeah. Now, now, and, now I well, use that time for practice. <laughs> yeah. Well, with everything that's been said and done to conclude what we discussed, could you please give us a roadmap for someone who is zero in visual arts? Like, zero and wants to get to the place you are in terms of skill set like basically what i'm asking is um where to start best tools softwares courses books anything like from here to here there's a roadmap what would those steps look like in your opinion oh uh, well i love that you asked that i think the most important thing to do at first is to uh, surround yourself with people who are wanting to get where you are which means be a part of a community, like try to find one. Like there are online communities. I thought O3 Academy was the best thing that could have happened to me when I was pursuing art, because that community kept me like practicing and pushing me. And and even though it's it's painful to fail when you're starting, there's this community that keeps giving you feedback and can keep encouraging you. So that is really important, not just because of that aspect that I mentioned, but but like also because you're going to feel like being part of the community and you're going to learn routines that the other people have. So yeah, I think that's the first essential thing that you should do. And then there are really great resources like schoolism.com and, and CGMA, Computer Graphic, Graphics Master Academy. Basically, uh, websites that have an opportunity to offer mentorships. Because first you need the community, but you're also going to need mentors. and. If you're really lucky, then you may be able to find those mentors from the community too. But but if you really want to invest on an art career, then maybe save up so you could buy a mentorship that is going to last for like two months. And they can be a little bit, little bit expensive, like a thousand dollars for those two months, but it's worth it because you're going to learn so much and because you have uh, used money, you are going to put effort on the work. And also, when you have a mentor that you really respect, you don't want to give them any bad work that you do, you want to try your best. So that is a keen thing that is going to push you also, like run away from the embarrassment and just do your best job. <laughs> So those would be my uh, two main advices. And also like try to find something fun that is going to, that you can take into the practice itself. But for me, that is uh, the plein air painting because then I get to shut down my computer and then go just outdoors and paint there with watercolors. And basically I'm practicing my craft, but in a relaxing way and in a way that can be part of like a healthy balance. So I think right. <laughs> and is that's there good. Else? All right. Mm. Well, thank you so much for coming by. And where can people contact you if they had any questions? Is your Instagram okay? Oh yeah, my Instagram is okay for sure. All right, yeah, I'll put you, in the yeah, and I'm, description as well. Yeah, I'm friendly. You can just drop me a message and I'll answer. All right. And well, that's.
that's it. Thank, thank you everyone for tuning in and listening to the podcast. Leave a comment down below if you wanted to suggest any future guests so we can contact them. And that's it, everyone. Stay safe. Have a good day. Bye. Thank you.